You got one life for crying out loud. You might as well just give it all you got. The Deej, Dan Jordan. Your daily dose of reality. Your daily dose of the Deej. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I need my daily dose of the Deej. I make the news. I don't watch the news. I'm a leader. The sales energizer, Dan Jordan. Listen, don't worry how to sell, baby. Worry about why people buy. And it's fun. You don't need a five-hour energy. All you need is the sales energizer. Just when I think it's not going to be as fun as the one before, each one gets successful, successfully, successfully better. Success. What's the word I'm looking for? What's it going to take to get you into this car today, huh? And now, please welcome the sales energizer, Dan Jordan. Boom! That's exactly it. Do that. Let's do that. Woo! Let's do that. It's Let's Wednesday. Do... Yes. You know, I, 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 uh, I'm a, I was about to say that Wednesday is my favorite day of the week because I get to do this. I get Chris Stone in the house here, and we get to interview awesome people. But I remember this video I made on Monday and I said, oh, you know, Monday's the best day of the week, you know, because uh, you have five full days to sell. And I think I have a reason for every day being the best day of the week. So uh, I think it's best day now that I got all you people watching, including on Amazon. And if you're not on Amazon, go to where, where should they go, Chris Stone? That would be the pitchman.live. Yes. We made it easy for you. So if you're watching on any of these other tubes, Facebook, LinkedIn, thank you, Jim Fuse of Fusion Marketing, uh, YouTube, and Twitter. Uh, come on over where the party's at, which of course is Amazon Live, and we made it easy. You just go to the pitchman.live. And you know what, Dan? What? When you have the right mindset, yes, every day of the week is the best day of the week, right? That's uh, that you know what it, it you know what it truly is. It sounds all like kind of metaphysical and you're fooling around and you know that whole, you know, make today your best. Day. You know, today is the first day of the rest of your life. You know, we could have there all those go. little clichés. Um, but the fact is uh as hokey and as corny as it is, life is so much better when you have a good attitude, when you have the right Absolutely. mindset, you know, I, I firmly believe, uh, you know, happy people make the happy people make the world better. Unhappy people make it worse and no in between. And the beautiful part is being happy uh, or excited or looking at life mm -hmm. as an adventure is a choice. And uh, it's so easy to fall out of it uh, unless yep. you, you like, intentionally put yourself in the right place yeah. and that's why i'm so pumped with our guest today because yeah. he'll wait he actually uh, he brainwashes you into being a better person and more successful and earning more money and better looking <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if better looking is is, yeah. a, is a part of it but yeah like today in atlanta right we woke up and it's pouring down rain and, you know, like, oh, man, it's raining. There's going to be traffic. And if you let those voices and you let that stuff kind of, you know, dictate how your not just your day is going to be, but and you don't know. But the more and more you do that, the more it can lead to things that aren't successful for you. And it doesn't matter if you're in business or if you're in sales or if you're in production or if you're in the sanitation engineering field. Um, those kind of things can affect how you do it. And that's why, um, you know, I think it's awesome that, um, a friend of ours, Sam Silverstein introduced us to this, uh, to, oh, to yeah. this next guest. So, um, I'm stoked to have him on for sure. Well, um, well, so, well, let's yeah. bring him on. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so yeah, uh, we have a little, uh, little surprise before we bring him on. So here we go. creating confidence, self-belief, and even when doubt comes in the room, how do you push it aside? These are hard skills that make people better. And that's what I'm teaching you to do is really be a better version of yourself and challenge yourself to celebrate that. I teach people how to really change the way they think so they can change their world. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please welcome to Dan Jordan, live mindset expert, keynote, motivational speaker, and of course, the author of Leverage Your Mindset. Would you please welcome to Dan Jordan, Mr. Ricky Kalman. <laughs> there he is. Hey. 
My my <laughs> arms have been frozen like this for ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but but doesn't that change your uh, this change the way you feel about yourself when you change your physiology like that? You're automatically in the right place, don't you think? One thousand billion jillion percent you are absolutely right attitude is everything and your mindset can be your best friend or your worst enemy and you get to choose yes every day okay so listen let's get this part out of the way because <laughs> you are a uh, you're a you're like a hypnotist you you have you've had tv shows and all this stuff and so the the common thing is i cannot believe you don't have like a watch that you're dangling right now I mean, that's like the whole, the whole <laughs> thing. You got to own that, baby. How do well, you deal with actually, that? You, you know, that's the first thing that comes to mind when people say you're a hypnotist. The first thought is, oh, don't look at me. Don't look at my eyes. You know, uh, I'm going to, you know, I might give you my account numbers really seriously. It has nothing to do with the swing watch or the theatrical look. Hypnosis itself is nothing more than a state of awareness, a state of concentration. And you're always in control. A hypnotist doesn't control you. And the 30 plus years of doing this and traveling the world and doing shows and seminars and teaching executives and people up and down a corporate ladder, all I'm doing is literally teaching you to relax in a different way and put to action your best of intentions. Yeah, you know this. This really is is so powerful. I'm. I, I really. I was looking forward to having you on because I'm. I'm a little. Uh, I'm a little geeky in this. You know, kind of whole self help world. I mean, I've been reading these these books forever. And uh, one thing I learned early on, I. Uh, you know, when you're a kid and you take a magnifying glass, uh, and you, you you capture the sun and you you know, fry an ant. You know, like that's the big thing on the sidewalk. You have an ant on the sidewalk, and so. And I realized then. And this was the example given to me. Just think of the intense power of the sun. If you could focus it, you could, you know, burn things. If there was enough magnifying glasses, you could burn a ship. You could do all that. And I was taught that if you put intense focus, like a magnifying glass, on one specific thing, uh, 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 let's call it a goal, it's impossible not to get there. And if you could convince yourself of that, it really the world, it's, it's endless. It really is. You can capture all that abundance. Do you, do you help people get to that point, even on your seminars Absolutely. or work? How does that work? Like, well, let's say I hire like you. Game. Yeah. You, you couldn't have put it better. You know, if you ask the average person, it, whether you're in a, a training program or you got, I have 2000 people in the audience and we're doing a sales event. How many of you in the audience would like to sleep better, feel better, have more energy, work out more, be healthier, happier, more prosperous, more grateful for life itself? And most people start raising their hands right away. And the ones that don't, I want to know what they're doing, why life is so perfect. The point is, is that if you want to do those things, the next question is, do you know how to do those things? The answer is usually yes. Then what gets in the way? What gets in the way of our success of putting to action those positive intentions I just talked about and make them our greatest accomplishments? What is it? It's usually mindset. Usually we sabotage our success before we start based on the belief whether we can and cannot do something. So if you're in sales and you're an entrepreneur, you're a leader, whether you're the next door uh, dad that, that, uh, that coaches or a mom that's starting an entrepreneurial business that wants to literally just grow this into something that's just amazing. It doesn't make a difference who you are, what you do. Your mind has to agree with what you want to make happen. That's what I do is I help people get out of their own way of their own success and, and create that laser beam focus that you're talking about. Yes. Yeah, yeah, because no, it I, sneaks up on you, right? Because you have all of this stuff, you know, your career, like I, I need to be providing for my family and, or, you know, I need to be, you know, raising these levels of success. These are things that I should be doing. And if you aren't intentional about uh, taking care of your mind, uh, that it, it seems to be almost like one of the things that it's the last thing that people try to take care of. They take care of their bodies, right? You're out there, you're, you're doing physical stuff and what, you know, and they're not, they're, they're forgetting about their mind. So Ricky, how do you work with people to be more intentional and, and to go, Hey, I can't forget about taking care of my mind. What are some of the ways that, uh, you know, some people can, can go uh, besides buy the book. 
of course. Well, but yeah, but where do you start? Like, where do you start? Right. Okay, I got it. I believe you. Where do I start? Well, uh, both of you said some really powerful things, and I'm going to piggyback on that, is that we are all human. We are not perfect. You haven't but met the deed. Acknowledge- you see, we're just met. This, <laughs> this, this, I feel sorry for mortal man. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. All right. Um, well, listen, I, I'm an, I, I have a, a wife and two girls. I know I'm not perfect. <laughs> okay. There you um, go. <laughs> the, the point is this, is that we, when we acknowledge, when we start to realize that our patterns and habits that we have created over a lifetime or even over the last week can be more conscious of those habits and how do we auto correct them? You know, I, you asked me the question, where do we start? It's giving yourself permission. I had a phone call yesterday with somebody with this long idea of how to increase their sales team. But the, the, the one question is, do you want it to happen? Do you individually and do they want it mm-hmm. to happen? You have to start with that permission. You have to almost give yourself permission. You, you know, you did mention the book, but that's one of the first things before I tell people to dive in with my book or even my philosophy or training, or even if you just want to learn something from me, you know, this is free information. Give yourself permission first. Mm. Give yourself permission that you want to make the change. Don't just say, I'm going to try to do something. I've heard you talk about it like this. I've, heard, I've seen your videos. It's, it's attitude, everything. It's confidence and belief. Think about the words that you're saying to yourself. You're going to try to do something or are you going to do it? And plain and simple, when your mind hears you're going to do something, it works really hard to make those things happen. What does that mean, Ricky? Well, we unconsciously work based on the last message you send your brain, whether it's mm. a in, internal conversation of self-talk or it's words that come out of your mouth as speaking to other people, coworkers, clients. What are you saying has a profound effect on your unconscious beliefs? That's where I start with yeah. is getting people to be yeah. more aware. Let's let's just sum it up. I help people change the way they think. So they change their world. That is, I mean, that's so, I see, this is why I have deep affection and love for you because I read the book (laughs) and this is what people do when they read, read books. You look for stuff that you agree with and then you say, oh, this guy's brilliant, you know, because he's saying just what I'm thinking. But (laughs) when you talk about, when you talk about that, that your subconscious minds, here's the last thing that you say, Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, I have a little chant. Some people know it. A lot of people know, but I say this thing to myself probably 30 or 40 times a day because in every, after each breath, you know, some negative thought is coming into your mind. And so I want to put the last thing as something positive. So I have this little chant. I say, uh, I lead, not follow. I believe, not doubt. I create, not destroy. I make the news. I don't watch the news. I'm a leader, force for good, force for God, set the standard. I defy the odds. I stand up. I take charge. I win. And then I, and so all those things I'm pummeling into my subconscious on a regular basis uh, to, to basically brainwash myself in, into being that which I want to be. I want to add one thing uh, that uh, you said, give yourself permission. One thing when I talk to my people that I'm coaching, uh, I also say uh, step two is forgive yourself for all the transgressions that you've had in the past because there ain't nothing you can do about that. And so if you give yourself permission to gain and forgiveness for the stuff you did in the past, you're in a good place because you can't really give what you don't have and you have to have forgiveness for yourself first before you forgive others, which is one of those positive things to do. Um, so Ricky, talk to me. Um, that's great. I read the book. I feel good. Um, I saw your seminar. Very good. You did nice tricks. We saw the CEO running around like a chicken. I got it. Uh, but how do I make this stuff last in my life? Well, wait a minute. Hold on. You said I've never made, I'm going to correct you on that one. I've never made anybody okay. bark like a dog. I know okay. you're just being facetious, but I want to clarify. I don't, when I do a show, I, don't, I never put people in a situation where that, that might be embarrassing or uncomfortable. So just the opposite. Right. I know that you were being facetious right. and, you know, and, and fun with it, but I want to clarify. Go, let's go, go back to what we had said earlier, Dan. You got to give yourself permission and don't look for the quick fix. Don't look for this snap of a finger as in life is perfect. And we're the problem is we're in a society of, of grabbing the magic pill or doing the fast workout. Oh, I only work out 10 minutes a day and if I feel great. Seriously, you should be working out all the time. You should be training mm. your brain on a continuous basis. You know, the difference between truly spectacular, talented 
athletes are the to the ones that really succeed are the ones that spend just as much time training their brain as they do training their muscles. So mm. if you're at home just watching this, you're taking some time out between the next phone call, self-discovery never ends. Look at every opportunity as a way of growing and, and program yourself that way and things start to change. But absolutely do not look for the quick fix. You mentioned in the book, I've had literally people say to me, oh, I'm going on vacation. I'm going to go ahead and grab your book. I'm going to read it on vacation. I go, no, you, don't, you, you haven't opened the book because you don't even realize what, you, what you're saying. The book is set up, my philosophy is set up is that you change little habits every day, mm. create little momentum. And then by the end of the week, wow, you start to realize you weren't looking for a quick fix. You are literally changing your cultural way of thinking. So the book is set up like 14 days. You literally read a chapter a day. Do not read anything more than that. 10 or 15 mm. minutes. That's all I'm asking. Even Chris mentioned it. How I, And obviously, Chris, you read my book because you know that I talk about this. We spend so much time on other things. We forget about ourselves. Just give yourself 10 or 15 minutes. Just give yourself yeah, 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah, and that's what I like. Minutes. Yeah. Right. You talked about the quick fix. And I think... Pe that's how pe like those are the those are voices people hear all the time and they'll see something on a feed on a YouTube uh, algorithm will feed them something you know get uh, five million dollars in three weeks by clicking this you know st stuff like that of course they're gonna click it right but it, you know th if they're being honest mm -hmm. with themselves and and the more you do that the more that's feeding the algorithm and that's that's feeding this and I will be honest with you when I started reading the book and early on you say hey this you know this is a 14 day two week thing that will help you and I'm thinking to myself oh cool you know, like this is only going to take me two weeks. Yeah. And at the end, I'm going to be, you know, completely, you know, whatever reprogrammed. I'm going to have, you know, be successful. But you shortly thereafter, you're like, look, listen, this is about changing your lifestyle. It's like when someone loses weight, of course, you go on diet, diet being a bad connotative word, right? Which you talk about in your book, right? People think diet is something that uh, means struggle and actually diet means how you eat. And so instead of you saying, OK, in 14 days, you're going to you know, completely revolutionize yourself, you will. But, you, but at the end of 14 days, you're going to change your lifestyle. You're going to change the way you think going forward. Um, and that's really what it's about. It's not about a keto diet. It's not about you know, something for, for your mind where all of a sudden you're going to be uh, great in two weeks. It's really about changing your life. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, Dan and Chris, you, you, you mentioned a couple of things here that, that are extremely important. It is programming. You, 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 Dan, you, you know, you even said, you, you know, you brainwash, you, you hypnotize. With each individual, we do this every single day. We hypnotize ourselves every day. We brainwash ourselves every day. Mm -hmm. Chris, you mentioned the weather. Are you going to get up and just appreciate that you can get up? Or are you going to complain about the things right. that you don't like? We spent too much time spending on the complaining and what we don't like in life. And we don't focus enough on the things that we do like, like breathing, like having love, having success, serving our clients, serving our team, gratitude, attitude. We spend very little time on that at time in, in, in different parts of our life. But when we become more conscious, of those things boy things change you know listen we started at the podcast mm -hmm. this this broadcast and you said ricky you have your hands up you know let's that's how we do it this is your logo this is your brand this is who you are dan you just like, get that energy going but you the program yourself every day even when things are bad even when things are down and you're gonna have a bad day how do you change or flip the switch I'm trying to I? literally reach out in the camera. Oh, yeah, I mean, oh. literally. I'm tr exactly. That, that's what I'm saying to your audience. That's what I'm saying. How but you I do, do it. it. You, got, yeah. you do it. I you do, do this. this. This totally yes. changes. Change. It's impossible. It's, it's like, uh, you know, try to smile and be in a bad mood. You can't, you know, right. you know, it's impossible not to feel good when you smile. It's not the mood that makes the smile. It's the smile that makes the mood. And then you're in control. And I, maybe it's a, I'm just a control freak, Ricky. Maybe that's just what I need. No, you, everybody has a remote <laughs> control. It's just what channel do you want to put it on? Oh, Ooh, that's good stuff. That needs to be written down. That's good. So, <laughs> uh, 
Now, I, there's one other thing that you have that you're not even talking about. Now, I'm I'm a high strong person in in general, and no. uh, it's not it's not like it's hard for me to sleep. It's not, but I generally just collapse. Like I, I there's never like a wind down period. You know, it's like ah, you know, like that. That's how it is. Um, but you have an app. And one of your app is like a little meditation tool. And, and you know, a lot of people like white noise. Are you a white noise guy? Like people like it's very relaxing here. For me, I just hear static. It's, it's, it's nerve wracking. So I, I, I never like, but your little meditation things on your app are unbelievable. It completely changes a state of mind. Are they like scientifically designed or did you just grab those off of YouTube? I've spent 30 plus years designing a structure of getting people to relax better than they ever thought they were going to relax. I have spent waking hours myself <laughs> tweaking and, and showing people. And, and in my career, I have probably hypnotized over 100,000 plus people. And I tell you that not to impress you or your audience. Wow. I tell you that to inspire you that I know what I'm doing and I learn every day and that we're constantly tweaking. We are constantly changing uh, the delivery system, the audio, the, the, the cadence, the words. So you mentioned the app. So the book itself, yes. we talked about it's a 14 day plan. You read a chapter a day after each chapter, I give you a progressive jump, which is kind of like an action step, but action steps sound like a, an assignment. Progressive jump is a jump forward. And I'm going to show you, a, I'm going to teach you a technique in the book, but then you can download the app and literally you can access a certain section in the app that is for users of the book. And you can't unlock that section unless you own the book because there's a password inside your book. And I did that because I want people to cheat themselves. I, I want people to really dive into this full force. And yes, there are tools and techniques to have each chapter I talk about, and I'm going to walk you through a meditation exercise. And by the way, if mm -hmm. you're the type of person that says, I I'm too high strung, this type of stuff doesn't work on me. Um, I've tried it before. It just doesn't work. Then I hate to be cliche, and I'm going to use this word and forgive me for being the cliche, and you're, yeah. you're in the right place. You're <laughs> in the right place. And I don't, again, I know we heard that, oh, I'm going to help you. because Now, I don't, oh, listen, I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to sell you on anything in life. I'm going to sell you on yourself. Yeah, you're going to buy from yourself. Yeah. You're going to buy from yourself, not from me. So I'm literally teaching you techniques. You're going to do it. These are the same things I've taught CEOs, sales individuals, professional athletes. Literally, just how to flip that switch, like you said. The app is my name, Ricky Kalman. So whether you're on Android or I or an iOS device, just go to your app store and search the title. Ricky Kalman. If you don't know how to spell it, I don't know where you've been looking. It's Ricky Kalman. And uh, just download it. You create a free account. It's free to download. There's some other tools and techniques if you want to dive in later and subscribe to, but there's a lot of free content. You'll get a lot out of this it's the first day. Yeah. And, you know, and so, I, want, I want to tell you, everybody who's watching this, this, this is... You know, people always try to give value, but uh, Ricky, what you're doing is giving more than value. It's quantifiable value. There's numbers that you can be attached to this when you're dealing with CEOs. But I just want to give a personal example with with my son. Uh, my son is uh, uh, terribly dyslexic. Uh, college wasn't his thing, and so he didn't do the college uh, the college route. Um, but he did at that point for for whatever reason, uh, maybe a positive influence or a negative influence. He made a decision. That when my, he said, when my friends graduate college, when they're 22 years old with a hundred thousand dollars worth of debt, he says, I am going to have a hundred thousand dollars in cash. And that was his mantra. That's what his focus was. That's what he was going to figure out how to do. And he never forgot that. And darned if the little bastard didn't do it. I mean, it just has to happen. So this is when your mindset is in the right place and you're moving toward. I so I think that's what success is. I think success is when you're constantly moving towards your goal. You're already successful. You know, that's that success. And then the money follows. It's not like get money first and then you're successful. It's be successful as a human. What you're doing, helping people be successful as a human. And then the money follows and all the accolades and all that other stuff.
follow. This is just so important. I, 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 I I'm reticent to start sounding all metaphysical and with all this, but the fact is your thoughts are things and it's an energy force that goes out there. They don't just disappear and uh, you can influence yourself uh, intentionally just as easily as they can influence you uh, through, you know, television shows. They're called programs for a reason, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so how do you do Absolutely. that? How do you, how do you s encourage people to stop uh, getting that those bad influences into the in you know beating up on the good ones? You mentioned your son saving and having this this goal in mind and not saving, earning. That's earning. what his thing. He wanted okay. to have it. And so, he but that comes from a programming of constant repetition. So unconsciously, he kept working to have that goal in mind. He would make decisions unconsciously to support his goals that he agreed with. We also unconsciously support the goals that we don't agree with. I'm sure you've uh. heard and watched these programs about how to save and how to get rid of your debt. And all of a sudden the person says, save a little money here and change this over here. It's not rocket science, but we've programmed ourselves in a habit of doing the same things, mm. whether it's just not working hard enough or not working enough hours, or just making a decision, I'm not going to spend X amount over my budget, and just make that a contract with yourself. That's a programming. So again, when we talk about financial security, and, or illiteracy, financial literacy, where you just don't know what to do, and you're just completely like lost, it's, it's not rocket science when you start mm -hmm. to just speak to yourself with confidence and belief, and put to action a plan. And he asked me how to do it. You know, mm -hmm. we're going to start slow, and we're, we're going to we're going to start with relaxation. Um, these these are some th pretty simple concepts. I'm not giving away the boat here. I'm not giving away the book, but it's really okay. simple. Okay, we're we're going to start. I'm going to teach you how to relax differently. So in the book, in my concepts, of whether you're on my app, I'm going to teach because whatever you're doing now isn't working for you. So if you're looking for a place to relax or looking, if you're the type of person says, person says, Hey, uh, when I go on, come home from vacation, I usually need a vacation for my vacation. Oh. Then you're not on vacation. <laughs> what are you doing? So again, my job is to help you relax better. Okay. Trust yourself better. Mm. Your internal voice, your self talk. And three, here's, here it is repeat what you want to hear. So relax, trust, repeat. Three concepts. Yeah. You dive into my material, dive into what I do. I'm going to dive in more. But if you write that down right now, if you're just watching this, and you could probably figure it out. I don't, you don't need me. You could write this down. Relax differently. Speak to yourself differently by trusting your voice and repeat what you want to hear. Write that down. Don't forget. Yeah. Just make a grocery list right now of those three things. That's great. Well, I need you, Ricky Kalman. I'm telling you, my life has changed <laughs> since I met you. It's just been a few weeks ago, but I've been, you know, diving into this stuff with it. And, you know, I'm, you know, I'm at a different level, you know, with this type of stuff already, but you brought me up three or four notches. Um, it's, it, you know what you just reminded me of, of uh, Earl Nightingale in The Stranger Secret. You are what you think about. Yeah. Power, you know, the we, we look at The Secret, we look at Nightingale, we look at Napoleon Hill, we look at Zig Ziglar, Tom Peter. I mean, you, you look at all these great people that have, that have pr produced some incredible works and bodies of works of art. If you read it, you're just, you're giving yourself more fuel. Again, I, I don't mean to be repetitive. It's not rocket science here. You don't have to mm -hmm. be a space engineer to, to really understand the arithmetic, the arithmetic of our mind. It's just again, what are we saying to ourselves on a on a continuous basis? That's right. Over and over. I, I used to have. I, I worked still... with. Go ahead. No, please. I was. I, I know. I was, I was going to say something stupid. You were saying something profound. Go ahead. <laughs> well, you know, I I'm in my studio and I still have, and I'm looking off at the corner here. I have boxes of cassette tapes and yeah. old material. From the from Zig Ziglar and Napoleon Hill and, and just I, I've talked to so many people that have succeeded in life, even the ones that have failed over and over and over again. And, you know, it's funny how often we start with the conversation of, well, what got you started? Well, I remember as a young man or woman, I was listening and somebody gave me this book on motivation. 
<laughs> it's not the holy grail. It's just you start out somewhere and then you just continually reinforce it and you realize your life grows the more information you throw into it. Yeah. I, yeah, I, I had an uncle. Who, yeah. I had an uncle who gave me uh, how to win friends and influence uh, people. And he said, this is the best way so you can learn how to pick up chicks. Like that was his line. <laughs> <laughs> that was getting his root. I, I think one of the things, yeah, one of the things that that, uh, that struck me early um, when I started reading the book was um, that everything you need, you already have. And I think one of the things that, you know, you call them auto thoughts, I believe. One of the things mm -hmm. that, um, you know, like I do is like, you know, I'm not a reader, right? I don't read a lot. Well, why can't I read more, right? I mean, that's that in auto thought is I'm not a reader or I hear all the time in the industry that I'm in, I'm just not a tech person. You know, I look at, per I look at people like yourself. I look at people like Sam Silverstein, I look at people like Victor Antonio. They're like, you know what? Maybe they don't know how to use a switcher. Maybe they don't know how to use a camera. Maybe they don't, but you know, but you're going to tell yourself, I'm going to learn this because if I do, I'm going to be better at my craft. I'm going to succeed more. Um, I'm going to lean into what's happening over the past year and I'm not going to let it affect me and, you know, let my business suffer because of it. And so I think with the, with that mindset of saying, I have this already, I have the ability to do this. Don't tell yourself that you can't be a reader. Be a tech person, learn how to use, you know, something, lean into it and use the skills that you have and change your, change your mindset and you'll, you'll succeed. It just may not be where you think you're going to succeed, but you're, you're going to move in the right direction. And I think a lot of people tell themselves negative things all the time, and that's going to lead nowhere but back, right? Chris, so, I mean, you couldn't was, have said it better. Cool. You know, when the pandemic started and everybody was literally shut down, I remember when doing a broadcast, talking to somebody, and the only camera I had was the one on my laptop. And then I realized every time I did something, I wanted to make it better. And change brings opportunities. Change is not scary unless you say it's scary. Change doesn't have to be overwhelming you know, we get really comfortable. We love a warm, fuzzy blanket that makes us warm. I mean, it literally, it's just comfort to us. So why change something if it's not broken? Well, why not change something if it makes me better? You talked about the switcher. I, I've gone through, I think I went from the, uh, if, for the uh, audience. So we have switchers here so I can switch from cameras, angles, uh, or different slides without having to share a screen. And we're talking about the ATEM switcher, the black magic, the greatest device ever. I'm gonna put a shout out. And I went from the basic uh -huh. model, the mini to the pro, and then you got all these extra buttons and everything else. You're like, <gasps> but when you start to realize how simple things are, when you, math was not easy when we were kids. History was not the, nobody just jumped into a, arithmetic. It was a building process. Life is the same way. And what a full year later, you know, full cameras, teleprompter in front of me, IFB, I've got two different types of mics. I didn't know how to use this stuff. But when you realize the little things we start adding make us better, you think about, you know, Dan, you mentioned the books. You, you, you know, Chris, you talk about technology. You're updating your most powerful app of all, and that's your mindset. Dang. Oh, you see how he brings it back? You know, that's a professional. That's how they do. So it, it's not just the mic that you're using <laughs> that makes you sound good. It's actually the words <laughs> that you're saying, you know, that we got going on. But, you know, it's it's so true. It's not like I'm asking you to invent the switcher. Oh, I got this idea. Well, but I mean, you're basically learning how to press buttons and when. And, it, you know, when you talk, you know, mindset takes time uh, to, to, you know, to, to, flush out all the bad stuff and just have the majority of the good stuff to be in the right place and to focus, realize that's a slow moving thing because you have to get rid of all that. But learning the new technology, it's a day. It's one day. If you focused one day out of your life and just say, I'm gonna learn this, you'll not only will you learn it, but you'll feel so good about yourself and it'll charge you to learn something else and to move forward. It's a, it's an yeah. easy win. This is a guy talking about technology better. with a, with a Macintosh computer from 1974 behind him. Yeah. That's cause it was my first computer. And by the way, it still works. 
That's, you know? that's hysterical. I, you know, I, I became an app developer. It took us 18 months to literally code and write the app for Android and iOS. I had, it's a whole language. It's overwhelming. We didn't just grab a template and said, ah, let's just paste and clip everything. Yeah. Literally, I had, I, I didn't write the code myself, but I wanted to learn and understand in conversations, my daily briefs, what we are doing, how is it working? I just wanted to know enough that I can learn at the process. So the next step, the next level, the next upgrade, I was able to help my team in this process of understanding. And now, by the way, we're co I'm constantly learning. We, we pushed a new update last week uh, to the app. So again, oh, yeah. I'm figuring things out, but yeah, I always say the best, you know, this, the second greatest thing, or this is the second greatest app in the world. The most powerful app in the world is this one up here. Yeah, I, I love the fact that you said uh, paste and clip instead of cut and paste, because it used to be <laughs> that we would clip out things and then paste it on paper like that's where oh. it was. And then then you put it on the copy machine and there'd be a line there. Ugh, why did I put oh. that tape there? Just <laughs> Oh, I, I've seen people like, well, what's this button? You just you just drag this and oh, the, it's done. Yeah. Now, let's 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 make it. Let's customize it. Let's let's code this from the very beginning. Yeah, this isn't let's let's invent something that wasn't there and build it. And by the way, we don't have to reinvent something. We we know what we want. We just got to figure it out. And and that's and that's life. And you mentioned diet or health or fitness or sleeping better. People know what they want. I, again, I'm not going to sell you on anything. I don't want you to buy anything. I want you to sell yourself on you. Well, but that's not available on Amazon. What is available on Amazon is a weight set, a weight <laughs> bench and all that stuff below there. <laughs> but you know we have to you have to give our our sponsor its dues, uh, you know because there's there's opportunity all those things you know those are toys you know a way to you know start losing weight and you know like you talked about my son who wanted to save money the first thing he did was cut out going out to restaurants and got himself mm -hmm. an air fryer got himself an instant pot and you know start cooking from home I, just a little change like that that like it, it in in addition yeah. to saving money. Uh, you know, holy crud, now I can cook. You know, my favorite <laughs> saying is we become more. Here it is. We right. become more unaware of being unaware. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that that was okay. uh, Jay. Who was Barrows that we spoke with last week? John Barrows. He said uh, unconsciously conscious. You know, you're conscious that you know the stuff you don't know. Yeah, and you have to aware about it. But you're uh, right. Yeah, it's like you run into a wall and all of a sudden it hits you. Like, why? How did I get here? And then you realize there was all that stuff that you need to have sort of undone reprogramming as you're talking about to get into the right mindset. I'm curious, Ricky, we haven't talked about this yet. You've worked with a ton of professional athletes and teams and, um, you know, have, have spoken, um, you know, back on the real stage recently as well. <laughs> so I'm, I'm curious how that went, but uh, when you're, when you're speaking to professional athletes, and I know you touched in the book on, on, you know, how athletes, you know, like Kobe Bryant, for instance, who, you know, took whatever it was, 4,000 shots a day, 400 shots, probably a day, and really spent, uh, you know, just countless hours working on his craft and the mind, you know, you need to, to treat it as such. Is that kind of where you go with, uh, with sports teams? Um, and maybe I, I'd love to hear like, if you've got any, uh, any stories, does it, you know, a coaching staff and as well as the athletes themselves and how their, uh, how their mindsets uh, are changed through that process. I'm going to go back. That's a great question, Chris. I'm going to go back to the very first thing Dan said at the beginning of this. We talked about me being a hypnotist and me, you know, with this swinging watch and all that stuff, the theatrics. And I, my, my success in my show of really educating people and not tricking people or deceiving people or controlling people and really showing them, hey, we're just going to have a conversation. I'm going to help you relax better. And by the way, you might do some fun you know, silly things. You might think you're a rock star. You might think you're a celebrity. You might think that you're on vacation and you're not, but because you're in one room, you know, with a, a thousand people in front of you. That understanding of what I did on stage provoked, if you will, the success of my mindset programs because more people wanted to understand. I saw this happen. It wasn't a magic trick. It wasn't a snap of your fingers, Ricky. You just help people relax and then they believe everything you said. Well, it's not what I told them they believed. It's what they believed about themselves. And so 
in my years of training sales individuals, corporate leaders, uh, customer service audiences, or even athletes, it's the same concept. So I've had the great opportunity to perform and speak from everywhere, from the Cincinnati Bengals to the New York Yankees. But when somebody really realizes the value investing of, of the individual, that's where change happens. And so you asked me about a story. I'll never forget years ago, uh, my manager called me and said, hey, Pete Carroll would like to talk to you on the phone. And I said, what? <laughs> and no, no, no. He heard you on a radio show. Talk about mindset. He heard about your comedy show. He is a big mindset guy. He wants to talk to you. So I literally get a phone call on my cell. I'll never forget it. I think it was either a Saturday or a Sunday. I know it was the weekend. I get this call. He tells me how interested he is about mindset, about the examples I used on the radio, and how quickly could I be out there and work with the team. And this is when he was with USC. I said, what does that mean? How quickly? He goes, I'm going to have somebody call you within the hour. How fast can you be here? I go, I I'm not exactly sure. He goes, I said, what, what do you think? He goes, how about Tuesday? <laughs> and, um, I, sure enough, it was by Tuesday. I was there and I was, it was during uh, fall uh, training. It, I remember it was in August and uh, school had not started yet for USC or, uh, you know, the, you know, the collegiate, uh, you know, classes, but they were in, in football training. And I'll tell you, I, I, I was so impressed with this guy that he, first of all, he treated me like a rock star. Uh, never, never met, but he, he acted like we were old friends to introduce me to every coach, every yeah. person, like literally, uh, this is the guy you need to talk to, but he, but he understood the concept of giving examples to the team to grow between here. You know, you can mm -hmm. spend hours and they will great teams spend hours on training and, and physical ability. And, you know, there's a there's a reason why he, he moved on to the NFL. There's a reason why he's leading, you know, a, a team that's so successful and you'll continually grow. And by the way, we're not perfect. We're not perfect. But again, it's constantly growing. That's it. well, you said a couple of great sales uh, lessons there that I have to share with other people who are the salespeople. One is the number one most important territory is the one in between your ears. Love that. And then uh, when someone says to you, how quickly can you get here? You've already completed the whole price objection right there. <laughs> <laughs> the leverage has completely switched. And so very good. Name your price, which is awesome to actually just to realize that. So let me ask you this. Was there a second, was there a uh, something in particular with that, with that USC, because those are great, you know, college kids in there and you were, you put up uh, as the expert in that area, you really had, it. that's a strong responsibility because what you say is going to be impactful on all those, uh, those collegiate athletes, most of which won't go on to the pros. And so it's for their life. Can you recall anything in particular that you said to them that was particularly impactful? And I may be putting years, you on the spot. Now, you know, I, I think that when, you, when, when a player comes up to you afterwards, and this has happened not only with USC or if I worked with another team or even a sales team, this applies to everybody. So if you're listening, listen even, even more. <laughs> when somebody comes up to you and says, you gave me a different perspective. I didn't know what this was. I didn't realize how valuable this was. And so I know I'm, I'm giving you a generic answer, but when somebody literally comes up and now acknowledges that, hey, I, I can do this because I was confused or I didn't realize the power that I had or I didn't think I could relax like that and it just happened and I put distractions and doubt aside and I focused on the conversation. And then when somebody says, I didn't realize I've been doing this my entire life. I didn't realize that my self-talk was guiding me in the direction that I wanted to do, go or the second opportunity of failure, you know, and, and when somebody says these things to you, you're just like, yeah, yeah, you get it. Yeah. So don't stop here. Don't stop today. Don't stop with this conversation. Don't stop listening to the app or reading the book or listening to other speakers. Pick up another book. Pick up another conversation. Listen to another podcast. Listen to another broadcast. You never know what you might pick up there. That, okay, so love now that. I love that. So I, you know, I, I think it, it, what I'm what I'm getting out of this mostly is what we the one thing that we can control is our mindset, is our attitude, and we can't control the weather. It's raining today in Atlanta. 
We can't, uh, we can't control whether or not, um, you know, a car is going to hit somebody out on the street, which is, uh, you know, unfortunate, all of those things that, that, that are sort of out of our control, out of gas in the Carolinas, you know, whatever it's, but we can control is how we react to that and how we can move forward and not let it affect us and go backwards. And that's, that's Absolutely. so important because I think a lot of times we think we're in control of more than we are. Absolutely. And that's, uh, that can set you back. So I'm sorry, Dan, you were saying? Ah, that's okay. No, Ricky, I think it's great. I, I, I hate to wait for this for the end, but this is, you know, this is my, because I, I preach a lot of the same stuff that you're talking, all, albeit not nearly as eloquently. But huh. how do you deal with your family members who know you from, you know, an embryo who are, still think you're crazy? Oh, you're doing that stuff again, <laughs> you know, because we have, you know, some some issues in, the, you know, that happen in any, any family. And but my first thought is, OK, what's what's great about this situation? You know, what's the good stuff about this? You know, that's my first thought just to get me out of that, you know, pouting. Um, but that angers family members when you do that stuff. Have you ever experienced something like that? Well, I'll answer that with two uh, two statements. One is you never profit in your own pool. And number two, <laughs> that Profit. as a parent, we're, 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 listen, we're, again, I'm going to keep saying it. we're not perfect. We're going to learn. We're going to grow. And, and hopefully we do. I think one of the greatest acknowledgments that I've received and I'm like, it took later in life because, you, you know, in my world, this is what I speak about, talk about every single day. Mindset, what you say, what you think, your mindset's your best friend. Worst and my kids and family have heard this over and over. And I've heard that statement of, uh, well, dad's just talking his mindset stuff again or yeah. whatever it may be. But I'm going to be a little humble here. And they've actually, when, the, my, when your own family quotes you and when you're not around <laughs> or, or when, they're not, when you're not supposed to hear it, you know, that, that's incredibly humbling. And um, I've heard those words come out before. So my point is this, don't ever give up. Don't, don't, yeah. ever, don't ever not think that you're making a difference. And if you believe in something enough, you need to be successful here and other people will start to follow. Yeah, They'll want to know great. what you're doing. Have you ever seen somebody at the grocery store and they, they, they just inspire you all the time and you'll go out of your way to go talk to them and there's other people that just... They bring you down and you avoid them. Be the person that people want to be around. Be the person inside you want to be around and your life will change. Dang, that's good. Normally I finish with something inspiring. You may have taken it's away all my hard thunder. To, it's right hard to there. top that one. Yeah. yeah, you can't close after that one. That's right. <laughs> well, but if you guys see uh, on your screen, on Amazon and all the other tubes, right here on the screen, Leverage Your Mindset, uh, Ricky Kalman. Uh, go on Amazon. If, you, if you're on any of the other tubes, go to thepitchman.live. It'll send you right to it. Um, and you can grab this book and comes with a code uh, when you download the uh, Ricky Kalman app and you're going to, it unlocks all kinds of bonus material that uh, Ricky, as he said, is adding to the app uh, regularly. It's like, in, and the other thing I was going to mention, Ricky, that I really loved about the fact that you created an app that is more than just about the book, but it coincides with the book and kind of goes so uh, you know, you get done with the end of the chapter and you go and you can listen to this and it's not where you sit down and read the book, right? You could be driving right. on a commute on the way to work. You could be walking your dog out for a run and it's like having a, a podcast and they're not long. They're not, uh, you know, 50 minutes long like this one has been. Um, but there, it's, you know, it's another way of aligning your mindset outside of you sitting down um, in, in reading the book and, and, you know, kind of furthering the lifestyle change that's a part of the 14 day process. So I, I love that. So let me make sure that everyone here is picking it up and, and yeah, go ahead, Ricky. I'm sorry. I just want to add one thing. I don't know before we get, before we ended, when you download yeah. the app, create an account, it's free to create an account, really simple stuff. But as you said, Chris, there is a promotional uh, password in your book. Once you're in the app itself and you've created an account, you have to create an account first, you're going to notice there is a, a section in the app called Leverage Your Mindset Audio Support Book Program. When you click on that, you cannot enter unless you have the password written in your book. That is where that password is, password is needed once you've entered the app. So if you're downloading for the first time, you will need to create an account. Uh, just It'll say, need an account. 
sign up totally free. That's it. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. And there's one thing I can add to this whole thing. Um, today really is the first day of the rest of your life. You, Whatever you did yesterday, it doesn't matter. You could start right now and it's fresh and nobody will know the difference. You know, you, you, you're, my phone before this one you had an antenna. I mean, it, it doesn't matter. You could change on a dime. That boy that I was talking about, Matthew, uh, he uh, when he was a boy, when he was like five years old, I was always afraid he was going to drown. That, that was my fear. And so I, I got them swimming really early. That was, that was my phobia. And so I said, to a place to go to learn how to swim and I get a call an angry call from uh, from the teacher come on in and talk and so apparently Matthew had profited like you say in the pool he uh in his own pool he uh, uh, apparently relieved himself in the pool and she, and she just kept on going on and on about it. and I'm like you know finally I get a little annoyed I'm like listen certainly he can't be the only five-year-old boy who peed in the pool and uh, the teacher very, uh, you know, matter of factly looked at me with her arms on her hips and said, no, but he is the first one to do it off the high dive. <laughs> so it was the whole thing. So that that lunatic, crazy boy uh, turned his life around. It doesn't matter. Everybody can do it. You can start from zero today. Just change your mindset and the world's opportunities, the universe of opportunities will come your way and you've just allow yourself to receive it. Thank you so much, Ricky Cowman. You've been awesome. Inspired me. Chris Stone, once again, best producer in America. And oh, for you guys, who, it. Who, you guys who stick around this entire time, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you all. I wish nothing but good things to happen to you all for the rest of your lives. Eat well, live long and prosper and go get them today. Will you? <laughs> 